Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, the wrist guy, and today I would like to talk to you about Panerai. Let's go. On one hand, they have incredible timeless designs, but on the other hand, they seem to be not that timeless at all. But before we get into those two watches that I have with me, uh, let's start with the history of the whole brand. Panerai is quite an old brand. They started in the late 1800s by a guy named, you guessed it, Panerai in Florence. He had a small watch shop uh, right in the middle of the old town in Florence. He just sold uh, watches, pocket watches, wrist watches. And one day the Italian Navy reached out to him and wanted to have some military watches. They had to be water resistant, they had to be highly legible. So Panerai came up with a new, let's say, a luminous material. It was of course radium based and they called it Radiomir. They just sourced Rolex movements. Yes, old Panerai watches had Rolex vintage movements in them and he just used his own paint, which he called, as I said, Radiomir. There you had it. Uh, the Radiomir was born, first watch of Panerai. And then after the success of the Radiomir, he developed a new kind of luminous material. Now it was not a radium based anymore, it was tritium based. He called it Luminor. He also added the famous crown guard and thus the new line Luminor was born. And those are the main two lines of Panerai, Radiomir and Luminor. Uh, I'll get to that later. And for quite some time, Panerai only sold their watches for military purposes. They had no uh, regular end customer, you know. And one day in the 90s, Sylvester Stallone found himself in Florence while he was filming a movie. And he just walked across this watch shop named Panerai. And he saw that one watch and he just fell in love with it. It was a basic base Luminor. He bought that watch and he wore that watch during this movie. And then Panerai blew up. They started selling watches to end consumers. And they had such an incredible hype back then. And the whole hype lasted uh, until the early 2000s. And Panerai was then bought by the Richemont Group. And now we're here. That's basically the history of Panerai in a nutshell. The whole model line of Panerai can be summed up in four models. We have first the Radiomir, Panerai's very first model. Uh, this one also splits up in the classic Radiomir and the Radiomir 1940s. The one I have for you here is the Radiomir 1940s. Those are just the basic Panerai models. They do not feature any kind of crown guard. And then you have your Luminor. I would say arguably the most famous Panerai design uh, up until now. These models feature their famous crown guard and are the most known up until now. And then you have the Luminor Due. That's a bit of a weird one because Panerai thought that maybe they should do more elegant watches, not that rough, rugged military tool watches. And they also wanted to cater more to women. So they introduced the Panerai Luminor Due line with more slim cases, with more elegant designs and only 30 meters of water resistance. That's just a very weird decision to me, but let's get to that later. And then you have the Submersible collection. The Submersible began as part of the Luminor collection. Now it is its own collection. So there you have it, four basic collections of Panerai. You have Submersible, Luminor, Radiomir and Luminor Due. The whole thing about Panerai is they started off very strongly. Uh, they had an incredible big hype and the one thing you have to say about Panerai is that their designs are very consistent. There is no other brand in the market that looks like a Panerai, that wears like a Panerai, that feels like a Panerai. That's what made the whole hype around Panerai even happen, you know? They look very different to other dive watches or even aquatic themed watches. And I believe the reason why Panerai now is in a bit of a weird uh, spot right now in the whole watch game is because they have a very consistent design on one hand, the whole theme of wearing a Panerai just became old, you know what I mean? You have seen so many people wearing Panerais that now it is not cool anymore, if you know what I mean. There are other cool, interesting watches out there and Panerai just, I don't know, faded a bit. And there were also some weird decisions that Panerai made. For example, the one thing people loved about Panerai was first their affordable price and their rugged movement and their water resistance. All those things were compromised <laughs> uh, along the way. So first, water resistance. You have some Panerais that are only 50 meters water resistant. Uh, the real Paneristi think that these watches are not even considered real Panerai watches. I don't know, that, that's just like nonsense to me. You make an aquatic watch, you make a dive watch that has its design roots in the Navy, in military underwater watches, they're not water resistant. 
that's a bit weird to me. So that's why I'm personally not the fan of the Luminor Due collection. And then you have the price. The price went up quite a bit because three, the movement changed. Panerai changed its strategy from using off-the-shelf ETA movements to making fully in-house developed movements. That's good, but also bad because people never wanted in-house movements in Panerai's. They wanted rugged movements. They wanted affordable prices in their Panerai's. The whole base Panerai thing, uh, you could buy a Panerai for 3,000 euros, 4,000 euros maybe. Now it's getting quite difficult to find a new Panerai at that price, to be honest. And now you have this brand that has ETA movements still, and also in-house movements that makes watches for 5,000 euros and makes watches for 200,000 euros, that has a very, faded design that is very true to its own heritage. That's a very weird spot to be in because the whole, you know, the, the hardline fans of Panerai are not buying Panerai because it became too blingy. It became too, you know, expensive, uh, in-house movements, weird complications that nobody needs. For them, Panerai lost its charm. And then you have the non-enthusiast watch guys. I don't know if they really buy Panerai because you have to get into it to buy Panerai. If you're not into watches, if you're not an enthusiast, you might buy Rolex or an Omega first before you buy a Panerai. So that's a bit of a weird spot. Then the whole movement topic. You know Panerai makes a lot of their movements in-house, but other movements are not made in-house. But Panerai claims they are in-house. That's also very difficult, if you know what I mean. You cannot launch a watch and say it has a completely in-house made movement if you have an open case back and everyone sees the ETA movement inside. That's not acceptable at all. And then there were quite some moments where Panerai themselves didn't know if a watch was fake or real because the quality of the real ones were not that great, to be honest. They used ETA movements. The finishing was not that good and the whole fake watch world became better and better. So the whole <laughs> genuine watch and fake watch when it comes to Panerai became very, very close. And these are all points that put Panerai in a very difficult position to move in right now. So if you ask me, Panerai is a very good brand. They make cool watches, they make incredibly cool designs, they make great movements, but they're not investment pieces. They're not uh, very cool in the whole watch game to wear right now. So I would suggest go get a Panerai if you love the design, go get a Panerai if you want to have one, go get a Panerai if you are a watch enthusiast and do not care what other people think of you. If you want a watch where you can park your money, do not get a Panerai. If you want a watch where nobody will notice that watch, don't get a Panerai. So it's a bit of a weird one. As for the quality, I have never owned a Panerai myself, so I cannot speak to that. But my older brother had one. It was a ceramic Luminor and the end link of his bracelet broke in two pieces when he tried to switch the bracelet to a strap. So that's basically all I can say about it. The two watches I have with me right now are firstly this one. This is the PAM01535. Uh, it is a Luminor, it is 42 millimeters in diameter. And that's the second watch I have for you today. This one is a Radiomir 1940s uh, PAM00740. Uh, both of these watches were sponsored by Chronex. Thank you very much. This whole video is sponsored by Chronex. Uh, if you don't know Chronex, they're one of the biggest watch retailers in the world right now. Uh, they are great dealers, so you can get incredible deals on watches like Panerai's. So make sure to visit Chronex and check out their watches. And you can use the discount code The Wrist Guide to get a discount on your purchase. I have these two watches with me right now. I believe they show perfectly what is good with Panerai at the moment and what is bad with Panerai at the moment. First of all, the designs of these watches are very iconic. So there you have the Luminor, a very classy design, very old design of Panerai, something a true Paneristi would love. And then you show the back and then you have the in-house movement. This is something a Paneristi, I believe, would not appreciate because the Luminor needs a rugged, simple movement, not an in-house movement. And there you have the power reserve on the back side and fancy finishing and stuff like that. It makes the watch unnecessarily expensive in my opinion. And then I have this one with you. This is the Radiomir. 
I really like this watch because it features the Panerai famous California dial. California dial means you have Roman numerals at the top and Arabic numerals at the bottom. You have no logo there. The watch is absolutely clean. I really like that. And then you have again the in-house movement. I believe in an expensive gold watch like this, you can have an in-house movement, no problem. But why is this watch only 50 meters water resistant? That's nonsense to me. I would not wear a Panerai that is only 50 meters of water resistant. That's basically a dress watch in a whole Panerai skin. That's something that grinds my gears too, because I really like the brand. I really like what they're doing. I really like their heritage design, but I don't know why they make stuff like this. And I don't know why the Luminor needs to be that expensive, to be honest. And that summarizes the whole brand, in my opinion, right now. So guys, that's been it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to check out Chronix. Uh, all infos in the description below. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay healthy and have a good one. Bye-bye.